morning. Thanks for tuning in to the thought for today. It's Good Friday and I'd like to read a portion from the Gospels. John chapter 19 verse 17 and 18. And he, the Lord Jesus, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two others with him, one on either side, and Jesus in the centre. It never ceases to amaze me why it's called Good Friday. I mean, Good Friday, when the greatest crime in history was actually committed, when God's gift of love was thrown back in his face, when Jesus Christ, God's Son, God's only begotten Son, was treated so cruelly, viciously and inhumanely, crucified on a cross 
at the place of a skull or Golgotha or we would maybe know it more Calvary. Good Friday. Good Friday. Betrayed by a so-called friend for 30 pieces of silver. Deserted by everyone of his disciples. Not one was left. Arrested by a mob baying for blood and murder. Condemned. Condemned and scourged at the whipping post by the governor who declared three times that he was innocent. Hard to believe. Good Friday. Yes, humiliated, stripped, mocked, beaten, ordered to carry that cross. His own cross. It was his cross and he carried it himself. And he was then laid down and nailed to it and lifted up for all the world to see man's inhumanity to man and man's total rebellion against God. We will not have this man to rule over us. That's what they said. We will not have this man to reign over us. Crucify him. Crucify him. Away with him. Let him be crucified. You know, Jesus himself said in John chapter 1, he was in the world and the world was made by him and yet the world knew him not. He came on to his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them give he the privilege and the power to become sons and daughters of God. Good Friday. Good Friday. What's so good about Good Friday? Surely it should have been called Bad Friday or terrible Friday, or disgusting Friday, or horrible Friday, or shameful Friday. But no, it's Good Friday. And it's Good Friday for a reason. Because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because in that cross that he carried that day, through the Via della Rosa, every street in Jerusalem, he carried it. He was helped along the way by a man called Simon of Cyrene who was compelled by the soldiers to help him carry the cross. But it made a difference in his life. We'll tell you later. Good Friday. Good Friday, yes, was the day that God demonstrated his love to a sinful, perverted, lost world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Listen, Good Friday on that cross at the place called Calvary where we see Jesus hanging there, dying for you and for me, for your sin and for my sin. Yes, we see God's love demonstrated for all the world to see. We see God's sacrifice for sin. God's sacrifice for sin. We see God's ransom for sinners. You see, lambs and bulls were then sacrificed in the Old Testament for the, the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, there's no forgiveness of sin. That's why they took a lamb uh, and they sacrificed the lamb for the individual, for the household, for the nation. But when Jesus came, John the Baptist seen him coming towards him at the River Jordan. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God which takes away or bears away the sins of the whole world. Jesus took our sins on his own body on the tree. It was God's ransom for sinners. That was for you and for me. It's also God's substitute. He died in my place. He died in your place. Jesus took our place on that cross because we should have been crucified because we were lost guilty hell deserving sinners so it's god's ransom for sinners god's substitute for sinners god's salvation for lost sinners to all who come and believe in him and trust in him their salvation god's love he gave jesus willingly he gave him lovingly he gave him sacrificially his only only begotten son he gave him generously he held nothing back he let his son die on that cross and shed his blood for your sins and mine there is a blood that cost a life we just sang it there a minute ago 
Do you know, that was him, Jesus, the Son of God, on the cross. He, bearing his cross, went out to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him. At Calvary, we see God's love. We see God's son. But we also see God's offer. If you believe, as many as believed in him, to them give you the privilege and the power to become sons and daughters of the living God. Jesus is God's love gift to this world. Jesus, God's son, has come to give you forgiveness, pardon, freedom from your sinful life. He's given you also, he offers you a new life. You can let the old go and begin a new life today as soon as you call upon him. Everlasting life, life that will never end. But also God's son came to give us hope beyond this life to the next. Do you know that day, let me just quote the, the second little verse. And two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the centre. Here at the cross at Calvary, at the place called Golgotha, three men dying. The dying sinner, the dying saint and the dying saviour. Notice, two others with him, one on other either side and Jesus in the centre. I believe that moment at Calvary was a prophetic moment fulfilled because way back 500, 600 years, way back in Isaiah's time, Isaiah the prophet in chapter 53 verse 2, he declared he was numbered with the transgressors. So here's a prophetic moment fulfilled. It was also a providential moment fulfilled. Those two men had an opportunity to do something with their lives and with their souls before they left this life to go into eternity, either with or without God. Those two men were criminals. They were thieves. Some say they were murderers. That's why they weren't there for stealing sweets. They weren't there for t taking something out of the corner shop. They were there because it was capital punishment. It was their death day. And that's why they were on the cross beside Jesus. But I believe it was also a personal, mo personal moment. Because one died cursing him. And one died calling on him. Isn't that amazing? Jesus in the centre. Isn't that amazing? You think about that. You can either die cursing him. Or you can die calling upon him. Do you know the amazing thing is? These two men were the same distance from Jesus. These two men saw the writing over his head. King of the Jews. These two men heard Jesus praying. Father forgive them. For they do not know what they're doing. These two men had every opportunity to call on Jesus. They heard him. They saw him. They watched him. And they realised this man was different. Sadly though, one cursed him. The other called out to him. That's amazing. Do you know, he's in the centre tonight. And by the way, can I just say this to you? The one who called out, he saw something. Now listen, he didn't start off good. He was bad. The one who cursed him and said he wanted a way of escape. That was the first thief. He says, if you be the Christ, then come down from the cross and save us with you. In other words, he just wanted a escape route. And there's people like that. They just want an escape route. They don't want Jesus. They just want the escape to do their sin again and get to back to their old habits. But something happened to the guy on the other side of Jesus, the second thief. Because while he watched Jesus, while he heard Jesus say the seven signs of the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And all the things. He watched Jesus. And he spoke to the man who riled him. The both of them started riling him at the beginning. But this man changed. Because he saw something different about Jesus. He was dying for our sin. 
He was innocent and yet they were making him guilty. He was taking our guilt upon himself that you and I may go free. That man noticed something about Jesus. He realised this man has done nothing wrong. We're here because of what we've done. But this man has done nothing. He saw the sinlessness of Jesus. He saw the spotlessness of Jesus. And he wanted Jesus to help him. Listen to what he said. Lord, remember me when you come in to your kingdom. Lord, remember me. Here's a man dying in his last moments. Here's a man going out into eternity without Jesus. Here's a man who's done bad in his life. Here's a man who's committed murder or something like it. Here's a man dying because of his sentence. And yet in the last breath of his life, he calls out to Jesus, Lord, would you remember me, this murderer? Would you remember me, this guilty sinner? Would you remember me, this terrible man, tyrant? Would you remember me? Listen to what Jesus replied. Today, you shall be with me in paradise. Today, verily I say unto you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Isn't that amazing? One died cursing him and went to a lost eternity. One died calling on him in repentance and went to paradise. See that thief that went to paradise? At the beginning of the day, he was out of Christ. When he called in that repentant moment, he became in Christ. And when he died and when Jesus died, he was with Christ. When Jesus hears you calling, he will answer your cry. He'll take you from being without. He'll bring you in and he'll be with you for the rest of eternity. Jesus in the centre. Notice Jesus in the midst. Jesus in the middle. Jesus in the centre. Can I end this thought for today with the question, where is Jesus in your life? We're going to pray in a moment. But just before we do, is Jesus in the centre of your life? Or is your life destabilised, polluted, ruined by sin? Are you living in chaos, confusion? Is your life meaningless and hopeless? Do you need stability? Do you need purpose? Do you need a new life? Do you need forgiveness? Maybe you're like one of those thieves on, or both of those thieves on the cross. And you think he couldn't do it for me. Friend, if he can do it for a man dying with his last breath. If he can do it for a criminal. If he can do it for a thief. If he can do it even for a murderer. He can do it for you. Tonight, Jesus is the only person who can stabilise and save your life from destruction. He's the only one who can give you equilibrium where at least you know where you're going. He's the only one who can give you freedom and forgiveness through his precious shed blood. There's power in the blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Why don't you make room for Jesus today and make him the centre of your life and the centre of your future? Let us pray. Father, Thank you for Good Friday. Wasn't Lord Bad Friday after all? Because Lord, you see it Simon of Serene, the man who was compelled against his will to carry your cross. You ended up saving him and putting his two sons into the ministry. Lord, you ended up giving the thief on the cross one last chance and he took it. Lord, today, someone listening to my voice Lord, would you let them call upon you and make you the centre of their lives, no matter what their past is, no matter what they've done, no matter where they're coming from, no matter who they are, 
rich or poor, wise or ignorant, Protestant, Catholic. Lord, you said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, may this be the day that they'll cry, Lord, would you remember me? Lord, please, we pray this in Jesus' name. We pray for Boris Johnson. We pray for his team. We pray for Donald Trump. We pray for Arling Foster and Michelle O'Neill. We pray for our province. We pray for our nation. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the churches and the pastors. Will you guard them? Will you guide them? Please, Lord, thank you for bringing that young man who lost his mum and dad back to his family again, out of hospital, free of the coronavirus. Lord, will you continually save lives and save souls through this crisis that we're facing, that may people call upon the name of the Lord and make Jesus the centre of their life. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.